today on Dr. Phil. They claim their brother is a moot. My mom needs to cut the cord. Ben's a 33-year-old man. You say he's got the chore thing down. You should have covered that when he was four. What's happened to those cars? Crash. One was on fire. Is there something I'm missing? You don't reward. Bad behavior. You're not requiring him to stand up like a man and do what he needs to do. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready. Take care of you. Whether you still have one living with you, no one living with someone else, or actually manage to get yours out and up on their own two feet. It seems like everywhere you turn, there is a grown child who can't, won't, or isn't being forced to stand on their own two feet. You know, be an adult. Over the years, we have met dozens and dozens of grown men and women who refuse to leave or boomerang back to the roost, and the people who love them, or should I say, enable them. We've gotten such amazing reactions from the audience at home that we decided to dedicate five days to these unique individuals. So, welcome to Moocher Week. Samantha and her sister say their mother, Stacy, is a very successful special education teacher and behaviorist. But when it comes to parenting their brother, Ben, they say, well, that's another story. They claim Stacy allows Ben to lounge by the pool stay on his phone all day and live like a prince while mommy handles his life for him. His sisters say their mother needs to cut the cord and she needs to cut it right now. He sits out here for hours, but he won't clean up anything unless I ask him to specifically. It's just ridiculous. My mom is absolutely an enabler of my brother. My brother's very clingy. He's like a barnacle on a ship. Spent absolutely 100% living scot free with my mother. My mother pays for his cigarettes, food, for his insurance, his child support payment. One time, in order for Ben to walk his sister down the aisle at her wedding being held in Mexico, I had to pay $4,300 in back child support so he could be cleared to go to his sister's wedding. One time, my brother was in a very toxic relationship, and my mother literally offered to pay him to come live with her. Now he's showing up from that's his driver who he pays $20 a week for his ride. After my brother's second DUI, my mother even paid for his ankle bracelet. My brother does not contribute to household chores in any way. I said, clean your room, and there it is. This is his closet. I require my two-year-old and my five-year-old to complete more chores than my brother. My mother has purchased about six or seven cars for my brother over the years. Ben has literally wrecked every car that he's ever been given, except for one where he took huge rocks and threw them at the car until it was completely unusable. All because he was mad at his girlfriend. My mom tells him she's not gonna buy him another car, and then my mom will do it again. I was thinking of buying him a truck. My brother borrows so much money from my mother, and he's always promising to give it back to her. It never happens. One time, Ben and a friend stole about $26,000 from my mother. She doesn't want to believe it, and I get why, but it's almost like we're not living in the same reality. My mother is doing my brother an absolute disservice. My mom needs to cut the cord, and she needs to cut it now. But Stacy hasn't been living solo with her son. Well, actually, she is now because her husband, Doug, he said he'd had enough and moved out until his stepson is kicked to the curb. I believe Stacy's uh, whole world revolves around Ben. She reminds Ben constantly of the things that he needs to accomplish daily. She manages his time and his, his money. I believe it's something a grown man should be able to do. 
Ben makes Stacy feel sorry for him. Because of that, Stacy constantly gets manipulated. Even though Ben's uh, license is revoked, Stacy still uh, gives Ben the keys to the car so he can drive. I've helped Ben get jobs uh, multiple times, four different jobs at four different uh, companies. Because drinking alcohol affected his work performance and he did not live up to expectations. One time, Ben was driving a forklift and drove uh, the forklift right into the drain valve of a glycol tank and shear the uh, valve off. We lost about 100 gallons of glycol, which is similar to antifreeze. When I first heard about it, the first thing that crossed my mind was Ben was probably drinking. I was very frustrated because people at work uh, knew that uh, Ben was related to me and he put my job in jeopardy. There's a lot of friction and tension in the house. That's when I left. Ben continues to live with his mom and nothing changes. The relationship will end. Well, joining me in studio is Ben's sister, Samantha, and joining us virtually via Ionico is Ben's other sister, Sarah, and his stepfather, Doug, via Skype. So welcome to all three of you. Hi. We got a problem, right? I mean, that's, I'll start with you s since you're here. What's going on? Um, they have an extremely dysfunctional relationship. Um, she continues to give endlessly and gets little to nothing in return. We're not talking about a young man here. No. He's 32 going on 33. Right. And right. Uh, he has children of his own, right? He does. He doesn't have custody of these children. No, sir. Uh, honestly, I think it's because he understands that he can't take care of himself. So how could he take care of them? Doug, you said, I've had enough. You, you couldn't take it anymore. You just moved out. Tell me why. What, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Well, there's a lot of friction in the house. Hold, um, uh, Stacy and Ben argue um, a lot about uh, chores that uh, he's, he's supposed to be doing, about money issues, about alcohol, and there's just a lot of tension, a lot of friction. And it's just, for me, it's not a, I'm not used to that kind of environment. Uh, so I decided to um, leave. Sarah, have you confronted him about this? Uh, I confronted my brother when my three-year-old at the time picked up a cup of vodka that my brother had left within his reach and drank some and spit it out and started crying. And, and you, you made an interesting statement that really stuck out to me. You said that you require your two-year-old to do more than your mom requires this 32-year-old brother to do. Yes, sir. Uh, we're a military household and... My boys do chores, doesn't matter their age. When we come back, Stacy says even though housing Ben is keeping her from retirement, there is no way she can put her only son on the street. She has even watched all the Dr. Phil episodes about moochers and enablers, and yet she still keeps buying this grown man cars. So obviously I've had a profound effect <laughs> on her thinking. I just watched the episode with the parents, with the 31-year-old who had gotten six cars, and I, I couldn't believe it. Since he was 16, you've purchased not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six cars. Correct. You don't look like slow learners. No, really, you, six times? It's like, it, it's like Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown. I know, I, I promise, it'll be here. Six times you've bought him cars? And six times he's lied to you. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna get a job. I'm gonna pay for this. I'm gonna do this. Come on. <laughs> that, that, no, come on. I bought Ben seven cars. I'm pretty sure when I talk to Dr. Phil, he's gonna nail me. Well, Stacy says her family accuses her of babying and enabling her adult son Ben, which she admits she may be doing just a little too much. We're going to really discuss what little too much means. But Stacy says things like trying to get Ben to eat his veggies and teaching him how to pay his bills may not appear like rational thinking, but they are all part of her getting Ben to stand on his own two feet. Well, how's that working? Let's take a look. 
asked, I asked, and I asked. And not just this year or last year, but many, 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 many years, I asked, don't throw your cigarettes down. I don't want to pick up your icky cigarettes. At this point, I couldn't kick Ben out in the street because there's no place for Ben to go. Well, it's just going to go right into his room. There it is. Ben is currently living in one of my spare bedrooms. He's not paying rent and not paying any utilities. He sits out here for hours looking at his phone, smoking cigarettes. Ben spends most of his time in one or two places, either outside or in his room. This is my son's uh, array of his main food that he eats. I go grocery shopping because I know exactly what he, he likes and I'm controlling his spending. This is the dirt that he let stay there. It's very hard to get Ben to do chores. Look at the water has to be changed. The floor has to be swept. This is disgusting. That he'll sit there and he'll get on his phone and he will just ignore all of this. I will ask Ben multiple times to clean the weeds out of the front, to do the watering, to take the garbage out, mow the lawn, to do the pool. He's one more towel on the floor, I'm gonna kill him. He'll say, okay, and I come back to check and it's not done. That drives me absolutely crazy. He doesn't really respect my rules. Uh, a couple months ago, I woke up hearing some noises outside of my door. I walked out here at around one or two in the morning. I'm hearing a bunch of noises out there. I'm not really sure what they are. And I yelled out, Ben, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I said, do you have company? Yes, I have company. Shouldn't you be getting uh, her home? Okay, mom. I come to find out the next morning, he was outside my door having sex. Well, that's extremely disrespectful. Ben knows exactly how to spin me around, get money from me or things from me. I paid for cars that have been smashed, child support. The list goes on and on. I probably spent over $100,000. Because Ben drinks and he's had two DUIs, I put my foot down and said he either needs to get out of my house or give me all his cards. Again, I'm treating him like he's three years old. Because I spent so much money on Ben, I've had to come out of retirement. I'm tired, I'm really depressed, and I feel like I've hit the wall. But as Ben's mother, I cannot give up on him. Stacy, thank you for being here because you don't have to be here. You could be doing something else. So you're here for a reason, right? Absolutely. Uh, you watch me quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I take about eight shows a day. So finish this sentence. You don't reward... A bad behavior. <laughs> Good. A plus. You don't reward bad behavior. What, is, what does that mean to you? Well... In my job, it means one thing, but with my son, I, I guess I'm really not um, very observant because most of the time my daughters have to show me and, and point it out to me that he's uh -huh. manipulating or that he's actually trying to get something from me or that he's trying to get over on me. I don't really see it. I really haven't seen it. And you say it's, it's easy to do in your job, but not at home. Absolutely. What is your job? Um, I'm an infant development specialist, and I work with zero to three children, especially children that are, have behavioral issues. So you shape the behavior of young people? Yes. So how long have you been at this career? Um, 35 years. So generally, at 35 years, people think about, hey, great ride, I think I'll retire, put my feet up, and enjoy the fruits of my labor. I would love to do that. I actually really would, but I still have Had you planned to retire about now? I had planned about two years ago, but Ben came home about two years ago. So you're now working for Ben. Huh? Excuse me? <laughs> You're now working for Ben? No, not you. That was for her. I'm not working for Ben. I mean, I'm not working for Ben. Well, if it wasn't for Ben, you wouldn't be working. I, I suppose that's true. Yeah, I suppose that's true. You would have retired two years ago. I would have retired a couple years ago. Yes, I would have. Right. I'm He's working, the reason you're working. I'm working to get Ben back up on his feet so he can be independent. Uh huh. And how's that working for you? <sighs> I've heard this a few times. <laughs> it's not working very good. It really isn't. Okay. And why he's is still, that? Well, he's still there, and he's, he hasn't acquired any of the skills that he's supposed to have in order to be independent. Mm -hmm. It's like dragging a dead body across the room because he's not participating to the level that he should be participating. I guess because he's anticipating I'm going to be filling in all the rest that he needs. He's just going to wait and sit back and let me do most of it. Because you do. I think he had a tough childhood, and if he didn't have so many things going against him, he probably would be uh, more on top of things and be more independent. But nobody has, I don't, I've told my daughters, who could withstand, okay, so he upsets me, but who could withstand the type of things he's withstood? I understand that you feel guilty uh, about some things that mm -hmm. Ben has been through earlier in his life, and so do you, do you pick on disadvantaged people generally? No, absolutely not. Well, then why are you doing it to your son? I don't think I really saw it that way. 
You, you don't think you're doing that? I keep thinking that I'm continuing helping him, showing, I, I think I, I keep, I say in effect that I'm still parenting him. Really? That's, that's what I feel like I was doing, is still parenting. Because I think there's things that he still hasn't gotten, so as long as, like, uh, to help him with his finances or to, to make sure he, you know, he, he's got the job thing down and he's got the chore thing down, but there's, there's just he's so many He's 32 more... years old and you're saying he's got the chore thing down. You should have covered that when he was four. But let me ask mm. you something. The sacrifices you're making, not only just continuing to work, but the things you're doing daily while he's laying by the pool and being drunk and and irresponsible, the sacrifices you're making financially, energy-wise, are they causing him to be better prepared for the next level of life? Well, we haven't seen any results so far. That's not an essay question. No, that's not, it's not, no, I have not seen any results that would... So the sacrifices you're making are not helping. No, okay. they're not. We're gonna take a break and when we come back, I'm gonna ask her a very pivotal question that is probably going to be outcome determinative about the rest of her life. We'll be right back. Ben's father would be grabbing him around the neck at boarding school. They would all gang up and beat him up. It just really ripped my heart out. The guilt is overwhelming. So one time my mother had this crazy idea to pawn my brother off on my sister. She sent him all the way across the country to come live with me. Having my brother at the house was like watching a grown child that can smoke and drink. He was lazy and he didn't do any of the chores around the house. I paid for the majority of the groceries, I paid the utilities, and the majority of the rent. He eventually got a job but found excuses not to pay his part. One time, Ben gave my rent money away to the neighbors. Another time, he refused to walk the 26 steps up to the front office to pay our rent when I was on deployment. It hurt my credit and it almost got me kicked out of the Navy. After six months, I ended up calling my mother and telling her that if she didn't take him back, that I was going to move out of my apartment and leave him homeless. Sarah says that at one point, she agreed to take her brother Ben off of her mother Stacy's hands. Uh, but Sarah says she quickly learned Ben <laughs> was not exactly an ideal roommate, so back to mom he went. Now, Stacy says a lot of her patience and generosity towards Ben comes from the guilt that she has over his childhood. I have always been there for Ben when he's needed me, and I've always protected him. He's been rejected by everyone, except for his grandmother and myself. Because Ben had ADHD, he was totally misunderstood. I remember him um, crying himself to sleep. He was in kindergarten because no one would play with him. It breaks your heart. My mom does make up excuses for why she chooses to enable my brother. She says it's out of guilt because he's had a rough lot in life. He has ADHD. So she overcompensates by continuously letting him maintain this bad behavior. This child has been up against insurmountable things in his life. Ben experienced abuse from his father. He was thrown against the wall. His father would be grabbing him around the neck, throwing him onto the ground. I felt if I contacted CPS, they'd take all three of my children and I'd never get them back. Because Ben was constantly being abused, I had to get him into a boarding school. While Ben was at boarding school, they were doing horrendous things to him. They starved him, made him eat alone, and they would all gang up and beat him up. My intentions were good, but in the end, it just really ripped my heart out that I'd sent him to a torture chamber. Ben brought up the boarding school countless times. He's brought up my dad and the abuse that he endured. When he's doing this, my mom sits there and takes it. She cries because she thinks that she deserves it. My brother takes advantage of that. The guilt is overwhelming. I have guilt all the time. I feel like I'm the only one that did this to him. I really do. I wish I could go back and redo it and his life would be different and he'd be a different kid. Okay, listen, I'm very sorry that that happened to Ben. Look, clearly what happened to him had an impact, right? It leaves you with, with a void. Absolutely. And so, you, well. so what do you do? You have to fill that void. But let, let me ask you something. Let, let, let's say 
you, you had an infant, and this infant was crawling along here, and the infant saw a toy they wanted, and so they started maybe for the first time to go, oh, wow, I, I can, I can kind of get up and stand up. W would you come along and say, no, 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 stay down. Let me get the toy, and, and I'll give it to you. Absolutely would, not. And then if they were crawling along and they saw something they wanted to eat, and it was up on a little child-safe shelf, and they started to pull themselves up, would you go, no, 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 here, you, you stay on the floor. I'll put it down here so you don't have to pull yourself up. You wouldn't do that, would you? Absolutely not. Then why are you doing it with your son now? You're not requiring him to pull himself up to get what he wants. You're not requiring him to stand up like a man and do what he needs to do, which you wouldn't do to an infant. You would require more from an infant crawling on the floor than you are from your, Doug, help me out. Ben needs to stand on his two feet. Um, he's, you know, 32 years old, soon to be 33. And, uh, you know, the enabling needs to stop and he needs to grow up. And my theory is you're doing that to make yourself feel better, not to help Ben. I've, I've... And that is a selfish thing to do. Yeah. The hell with you I want to feel better today, so I'm going to buy you how many cars? Six, seven. Seven cars. And what's happened to those cars? Some were crashed, some were sold, some one was on fire. He's destroyed them all. They've been destroyed. Dr. Did, Bill, he's never had a car for more than a year. Is there something I'm missing? In, in, I guess I don't want him to fail or hurt anymore. And I, I didn't, see, I didn't you... see it. I didn't see it as something that was selfish on my part. I don't want him to hurt. It's negligent and it's selfish. You know that. Come I, on. I, I, know, I know that, but it's my child. Read that for me. Negligence, failure to do what a reasonable person would do under the same or similar circumstance. Would a reasonable person buy this young man seven cars when he's destroyed them all? I kept feeling like if he got a car, he could get up and get going and take himself to work. I understand that once, maybe even twice. Mm -hmm. Would a reasonable person mm -hmm. continue to buy this young man automobiles no, when not. he destroys them all? That's not reasonable. It's not reasonable. A reasonable person would not do that no, under the same or similar no, circumstances. No. No, not seven cars, no. He does not pull his weight, and in the last week, she has had to pick up after him. She makes him dinner. She's even done his laundry right before we came. I don't make him dinner. You make, you make, you said that you make Ben? Well, she I probably made doesn't it. make him dinner because she's looking for trucks to buy him. She's thinking about buying him an eighth vehicle. But from smoking pot to DUIs and ADHD, Ben says there are a number of obstacles keeping him from success. So let's talk to Ben himself right after the break. My mentality holds me back sometimes. I shoot myself down a lot. Closed captioning provided by Well, it's been two years since Ben says uh, he was left no choice but to move in with his mother, rent-free, something he says he's not proud of. But Ben says that he's not taking advantage of his mother's hospitality and kindness. He's just, well, he's just stuck in a rut. My mom helps me out a lot. She's always, always had my back. She's always helped me whenever I needed any kind of help. My brother and my mother have an extremely toxic relationship. She gives and he takes. It's purely one-sided. In a perfect world, I would be making my own way, not having to be at mom's house, not having to ask for things, not feeling like I'm 10 when I'm 33 years old. I feel stuck. My brother plays the victim. He acts like he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing as an adult. I am a functioning alcoholic. It's not good, but I'm not drunk throughout the day. My first DUI uh, was last year. I was coming home from work and I went through the stop sign and I hit a tractor trailer because I was inebriated. I did go to jail just overnight. My second DUI, I was on that same stretch of road. 
Being a little intoxicated, I spun, went across oncoming lane. I went through a telephone pole. Police showed up, realized that I had been drinking. Once again, I had to go to jail. It is tough to get a job right now because smoking marijuana um, has become an obstacle. It helps me sleep, get motivated to do things. But if somebody were to offer me a job tomorrow, I wouldn't be able to pass a drug test. A 32-year-old adult should be able to hold down a job for more than a year. He would rather do what feels comfortable, which is relying on my mother, than using his addiction as a crutch. My mentality holds me back sometimes. I shoot myself down a lot. I turn down good opportunities that I really shouldn't. You, you got a place to live. You got somebody to take care of you. She does your shopping, cooks your meals. So I don't ask myself why you're not doing different. I ask myself, why not? I mean, why would you? I do feel like I'm stuck, and I do tell myself that I can't do a lot of things, and I believe that does have to stem back from the boarding school. Um, and I believe that I do use things as uh, an excuse not to move forward. Um, it is comfortable uh, living at home. Um, and you say it's really not free. You pay back by doing chores, right? I work around the house, yes. OK, sir. well, let's take a look at that. So I ask and I ask many, 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 many years. I ask, don't throw your cigarettes down. I don't want to pick up your icky cigarettes. This is his closet. Yeah. I said, clean your room, and there it is. The water has to be changed. The floor has to be swept. This is disgusting that he'll sit there and he'll get on his phone and he will just ignore all of this. There are two dogs that need to be walked every day. I expected Ben to walk the dogs, but now I have to walk them twice a day. One more towel on the floor, I'm gonna kill him. If you were an employee, I'd fire you. I believe you would. Wouldn't you? Y yes. But why don't you? I just nag him instead. Remind him, nag him, you know, push him. Try to get him to start doing the tours the appropriate way. Because I've always told my kids that whatever job you do, your signature is on it. And you should do it to the best of your ability. I just don't know why he well, has You say that, but then you don't, there's no consequence that supports that. I don't know what consequences to bring. Ben has reasons for not succeeding. You, I, I went through and pulled out the reasons you gave us for not succeeding. You know, I, I look at these and I say, well, this is a good example. DUIs took my license. I hate it when they do that. Those damn DUIs just took your license. Are you kidding me? I gave myself the DUI. In turn, my license was lost because of myself. But um, Yeah, but that's the is... way you talk. I won't pass a drug test because I smoke pot. Then stop smoking pot. Yes, I, yes, sir. You I say, know. well, it's, it motivates me. No, it doesn't. In, in fact, it does exactly the opposite. It erodes your IQ. It erodes your motivation. It doesn't motivate you. I've asked you every single time you come home when you get your ride home, yeah. are you high? And I, and and you, I have been a couple times. And yes, you just lie to me, and I, and I keep telling you, are you... What trust can we have? I mean, I don't know the truth, and so I gotta keep, I know my suspicions are right. Why aren't you not telling me the truth when I ask you? I mean, I'm not. Because I don't want to be yelled at, and if, I mean. You don't wanna be lectured, is that it? Yes, I didn't wanna be lectured, and I, I wanted but, to spell but lying to me. Seriously, I mean, what teen wants, to, I mean, sorry, what, what, what person wants to be lectured? There, there are two particularly important reasons Ben's family would like to see him man up. We're going to find out what they are after the break. Every day I was beaten up. There were times that I had been hit with the logs, golf clubs, sticks, and rocks. They would take coals out of the stove and put them underneath my rear end. Going to the boarding school was the worst experience of my life. We're gonna find out what they are after the break. Every day I was beaten up. There were times that I had been hit with the logs, golf clubs, sticks, and rocks. They would take coals 
out of the stove and put them underneath my rear end. Going to the boarding school was the worst experience of my life. Closed captioning provided by Well, despite what his family may believe, Ben says living at home with his mother is not something that he wants to do. You say if you'd never gone to boarding school, your life wouldn't be where it is now. And if your dad hadn't been the way he was, things would be different. And certainly boarding school didn't work out for you. Let's take a look at that experience. Boarding school was the worst experience of my life. My first day, not even maybe an hour there, I got beat up by five guys. Another guy took my feet and just drug them out from underneath me. So just yanking me all over the place. That was my first day. That's what set the tone for the entire seven month stay. Every day I was beaten up. I was constantly being hit in some type of manner. A good day would be once. There were times that I had been hit with the logs thrown at my face, golf clubs, sticks, and rocks. One time I got hit in the face with a headless copperhead snake. I had, you know, blood from the snake all down the side of my face. I got hit so often that I could see somebody 10 feet or more away. And if they lifted their arms over their head for any reason, I would, I would duck and put my hands up. Once they noticed that I was doing that, they would purposely just shove their hand in my face. So in the boarding school, they used physical training as a method of torture. One of the torturous things that I was made to do, what they called electric chair, they would make me put my back against the wall and they would take coals out of the stove and put them under the rear end. Every day I just wanted to leave. I didn't want to get out of bed. After seven months of being at the first school, I left that boarding school. I went to another one, but the same things were still going on. I was still getting beat up. My time there was miserable. The boarding school experience did cause damage. It lives with me till today, yes. And you didn't get much better treatment from your father, correct? No. And he's on the phone. Joining us is Ben Sr. Uh, you admit you weren't a great father, correct? No, I probably the worst. But I believe that most of the abuse that Ben imagined from the boarding school, he put on me because he didn't have anybody else to blame or attack at that time. No, Dad, we were all in the house. No, no, no. no Don't we even, my God, what I witnessed, my throwing myself in between you and him and what you did to him, no way in dang hell Dad, you, we you're going to get away there. with that crap. Are, are you are you denying what are you denying the fact that you were abusive to your son? Oh no, I'm not denying that. Since he was not little, at all. Not I at couldn't all. even send him to but school. When, when everybody else considers abuse, I, I consider it survival. I've never been abusive. I've never been arrested for being um, abusive at any time or pool. anything like that. How but I've I mean, been sent it, to jail a number of times because Ben beat me up and then called the cops and turned me in. It was about time he hit you back. The things you did to him still gives me nightmares. I don't even want my children around you. Dad, I remember when he was like 11 and whatever it is he did, you started chasing him. He ran out the front door, made a circle back for the house. And before he got the screen door open, you pummeled him with your elbow and we couldn't get him out of that corner. My you know head what? was being slammed I, against the wall. I feel so bad about these things I don't remember. You don't deny that you have been a negative impact and an abuser I, I, with your son. I, I have, Dr. Phil, I've probably been the most negative impact on all those people on your stage than anybody else in the world. Well, I just wanted to confirm that because I have some things that I want to say to Ben, which I'm going to do right after the break. Thank you. One thing everyone can agree on is at 32 years old, Ben needs to stop living with and relying on his mother. And I want to add that you need to stop living in the past. A lot easier said than done. But if you live your life looking over your shoulder, then your past becomes your future. I don't mean to trivialize what's happened to you nor do I mean to trivialize the impact that happens uh, to someone when they are abused as a child. You had zero responsibility for that. You have zero blame for that, zero responsibility for that. 
you have 100% accountability for what you do about it now. I've asked him to get another job so he could be more financially um, stable. Um, I could, I mean, he goes down and gets the application, but he doesn't do anything after it's that. Not your job. It's not your problem. Let me ask you something. How do you think people f get self confidence? By attaining things through their own merit. Yeah, they, they observe themselves do that, right? Yes. You're cheating him out of observing himself master his environment. Okay. Because you don't give him the opportunity to do that. Okay. I mean, I, you're right. I mean, but I didn't see that before. I thought I was helping. I thought I was doing what, what was needed. Because I love him. He's, you know, and I just want him. I, sometimes I think that he can't take one more failure. No, you can't take him having one more failure. That's what you're saying is, I feel so guilty because I didn't take him out of this abuse by his father. I feel so guilty because I sent him to a school where they picked on him. I feel so guilty that I didn't protect him when he couldn't protect himself that I'm now going to make myself feel better by coddling him instead of letting him develop as a man. Dr. Phil, even last night, um, I reminded, well, actually one of your staff reminded us that we had to wake up early, and so I just sent a message saying, you know, make sure you're up. Um, and she said, well, will you call your brother and have him call the front desk at the hotel room? We're not even staying in the same hotel room. And it's little things that she doesn't even notice she's doing herself. It's so second nature that if it's, her, his success is her success. His failure is her failure, and she can't stop. You help a, an eight-year-old child wake up. You don't help a 32-year-old man wake up. I just was afraid that he, you know, the show was important, and I didn't think he was going to wake up because he didn't. He, he wasn't. He never. I got a call from one of your staff that why isn't he answering me? Do you so really think this is about a wake-up call? No, I don't think it's about a wake-up wake up call for me, maybe, but not a wake-up call for him. There you go. So where does Stacy and Ben go from here? I'm going to tell them what I think after the break, and I'm going to be very specific. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by Ben. You got to get your act together, buddy. Maybe you begin working someplace at an entry level, and you do well, and you bump up. Then you bump up. Then you bump up. Then you bump up. I don't know. But you have to start somewhere. And you need to get out of his life and let him do it. Because it's eroded your marriage. It's eroding your life. And if that was in some way going to give him a new lease on life, maybe you could make an argument that the sacrifice was worth it. I don't think so. But maybe you could make that. But the point is, it's not helping him. It's hurting him. Get him out and, and take 90 days to do it. That gives him time to save up some money, get a job, get a promotion at the job, do what he has to do. He needs to be in therapy every week talking about the issues of life planning. He needs to do that, and you need to stay out of it. If you don't, that's okay. Just recognize that you're doing it to make yourself feel better at your son's expense. Okay. I, I, I mean, I'll, I'll let him 90 days. He has to if, work if it that's out. what you want to do. I, I know. I, I know. Dr. Phil, this is not new to her. She watches you all the time. Ben, you can do this. You, can do, you just have to decide, you know what? I'm going to put one foot in front of the other one foot in front of the other, I'm going to work my way out of this and realize you've got 90 days to get and find a place. And if you, find a roommate, find two, do whatever. Live on your own. And you need to be in therapy every single week and, and take a copy of this and spend the first hour playing it for the therapist. <laughs> As parents, we need to be aware of the importance of thoughtful negotiations in our family relationships. And the objective in every relationship negotiation should be 
everyone, everyone walks away a winner. You always want both sides to feel satisfied and fulfilled, so making a deal that totally favors you and ignores the needs of your partner or child will never last. All relationships are mutually defined, and if you don't like your relationship with your child, you just need to renegotiate it. Look, there are some things you can do when you sit down to negotiate. There are five key steps, techniques for successful negotiation. Number one, begin by narrowing the area of dispute. You know, find out what they really want. Work hard to find some middle ground in which both sides give some and get some. Be specific in your agreement and the outcome of the negotiations. Make negotiated agreements shorter term in the beginning and then longer term after a period of adjustment. But an overarching idea is to just outfare the other side. Be generous in your negotiations. It comes back with a payoff, I promise.